Hey there. All right. Oh, this is way too small. So today, or I guess last time, last time I was working with uh, Arturo 182's uh, BlackBerry 10 keyboard P mod. So it's a little BlackBerry key mod keyboard on a breakout with a little AT Sam D uh, chip running on the back. And that's handling all of the keyboard logic and everything like that. And I've got it wired up over I squared C to a Nordic NRF 52. Um, and I was able to get some basic hello world type stuff going. So let's start by getting that working again and making sure that it's still working. Uh, make sure I haven't unwired anything. I've used this board for a couple things since then, so it's entirely possible I've unwired something. Um, hopefully this uh, this episode's going to have fewer uh, dev board glitches than last time. And we've got a bunch of people in the chat today, so hey to everyone who's watching. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm James, by the way. If this is the first time you're watching the stream, uh, my tweet about this got posted a bunch, so uh, if this is your first time watching, thanks. Um, cool. So I'm going to first start up a uh, screen... So now I'm connected to the serial port on my microcontroller. So the debug chip on this is wired up to like a virtual USB serial. And the other thing I need to do is start up a JLink server. So now I have a GDB connection to my microcontroller. This is probably too small, but there's also nothing interesting here. I did start it on the right port, which is good. Um, and let's do a cargo run release without looking at the code and just see what I left on this board. Uh, cool. So we're running into problems where it's not loading this again, but I haven't figured that out. Um, okay, so we hit a breakpoint in our main, so let's go ahead and hit run on that. And I can see it's fading up, uh the LEDs and if I type uh, let's go to our screen oh ah right so I had some printing stuff so you can see it writing characters but it's also scrolling through the backlight because that's the last thing I did was I made it just rotate through the um, the backlight color is it doing the FIFO it is so I just need to comment out the lines where uh, I print out the backlight level because that's not particularly interesting to us. Okay, so now we get a reset. So now I can type hello uh, alt. Let's do a shift stream alt. Let's see. I don't know if uh, there's some stuff with cap locks, but I know that's going to actually break my code. But hey, we have and right the the backspace goes back one space and enter just hits enter where it was oh no i've this is interesting uh yeah so screen isn't exactly a perfect keyboard control um i should probably uh let's see how are we going to handle this it's backspace all the way this is a uh, Typing with the BlackBerry Q10 Can you tell I never owned a BlackBerry? Keyboard Oh, oh, I think Interesting, I've got like alt lock turned on If I hit shift alt uh, sim alt. There's obviously some way where you can. Okay, cool. Where you can knock it into a symbol like alt key, and oh, I think it. Uh, keyboard space 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 space. Look, it's all gone. It's like it never happened. Um. Alt exclamation point exclamation point one one okay that's enough typing but we have a basic hello world which means we know generally how to talk to it um, this is a this is the last hour of the last stream 
Um, so we have a mostly working binary. So what we're going to do now is there's a, um, I should pull up a web browser. Uh, let's get a new, let's look up embedded how and pull that up. Although it's not a tremendously useful readme. Um, you know what I'm going to bring up instead is I have some study guides, I think. Let me pull that tweet up because that tweet's going to honestly probably be more useful. So in Embedded Rust, we use a Rust trait system to um, make portable drivers for this. So let me pull this up. So this is a Something I did around Christmas. I tried to write up like a visual study guide, and not everyone likes my handwriting, but my handwriting is pretty bad, so it's understandable. Um, but I actually have two uh, images here. So one kind of explains the very low level crates that you're likely to run into. You probably, as a user, when you're first getting started, won't run into all of these. Hi, Ernesto. Thanks for watching. Uh, you probably won't run into all these, but you'll probably see these as dependencies. Um, so this kind of explains what each of the jobs of these four uh crates or libraries are about um, and in the second one i talk more about how you write drivers in rust so there's a tool called svd2 rust which takes the xml files provided by your manufacturer um and generates rust code for you but it's like really low level uh like register code so this is like i want to put this byte at this memory address uh, but it's nice because it provides some um definitions of like what are valid values to put at each register and things like that. Um, and that generates what's called a pack or a peripheral access crate. Um, and that's what you use to interact with the really low level parts of your microcontroller. Most people from there will make a HAL or a hardware abstraction layer crate, which is what most people think about when they talk about programming microcontrollers. You say, I want my UART on this port and I want to send these 12 bytes over the UART. Um, so packs are automatically generated and HALs are written by people. So right now I'm, because I'm using the Nordic NRF 52, I'm using the NRF 52832 HAL, which is the hardware abstraction layer for my chip. Um, myself and some, a lot of other people helped write this. Um, and we already have abstractions for things like the UART and relevant for what we're doing right now. Um, we have abstractions for the I squared C, uh, port. So this is communicating over the I squared C protocol or I2C or uh, yeah, there's a bunch of different names. I squared C I think is trademarked uh, or SM bus is really similar. It's a version of I squared C. Um, but this is really specific to the NRF52 that I'm using. So that's what I used in my hello world. I just used the NRF52 crate because I, I'm writing it for this. But that's not super useful if you're using like an STM32 and you want to um, use my driver. So I want to be able to write the driver for this keyboard just once. And I want it to work on an NRF 52. I want to work it on an, an STM32, a TI chip, an Atmel chip, whoever's microcontroller you're using it on, even like an embedded Linux machine. I want you to be able to use this driver uh, anywhere you're using it. And the way that we do that in embedded Rust is we use uh, Rust traits. So traits are kind of like interfaces in Rust. Um, and what we've done is we've created this collection of traits called embedded HAL, where embedded HAL is just a definition of trait. So like, what is a UART? UART can send bytes and receive bytes. What is an I squared C device? You can um, write some data to a specific I squared C address, or you can read some data from an I squared C address. Um, there's a couple other things you can do, but those are the, the main things that we're going to be using here. And because these are traits, so traits in Rust mean that you can actually have decoupling of these things. So over on this side, you can have the, this is all UART, but it's the same if it's I squared C. So you can have your NRF52 specific I squared C driver. And that's going to be specific because all the chips work totally differently. And you can have your STM32 driver and your AT SAMD driver. Um, so everyone just writes an I squared C driver that works however your chip works. And then we have one trait for UARTs or I squared C or something like that that just says abstractly, this is how an I squared C device works, or this is abstractly how a UART works. And then over here, when we're writing a driver for specific 
accessories, like this BlackBerry keyboard, which uses I squared C, we can write the driver for this relying only on the traits that are defined here. So when I write the driver today, it's not going to say like NRF52 I squared C write. It's just going to say I squared C write. And that means anyone who has an I squared C implementation that fits this trait can use it. So instead of having to have like N chip support and M drivers, where you have to, if you wanted to have a combination of all those, you'd have to multiply them together, or you'd have to like change how the driver works for every single implementation. Instead, you just write drivers for things like keyboards or sensors uh, against an abstract I squared C protocol. So I need to send these bytes, I need to receive these bytes. And then when once you have like an NR52, you just say, oh, here's my I squared C device. And all of a sudden now you can use um, any driver without having to worry about porting it to your specific chip. That's generally the idea. I'm gonna grab some water because that was a lot of talking. So what I did last time was, like I said, I wrote a manual driver using the NRF52's library for communicating with my BlackBerry keyboard, which is great for anyone using the NRF52, but totally not useful for anyone who's writing uh, code for an STM32 because you'd have to go in, kind of figure out what I'm doing, and you'd have to port it to how the STM32 works, which is still not terribly complex, but it's more work than we necessarily want. Excuse me. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be taking it from a really hard-coded driver to the NR52. And instead, I'm going to be using the interfaces that are defined in the I squared C traits in embedded HAL. And this means that I'm creating what's called an embedded HAL driver. It's a driver that depends only on embedded HAL, which means anyone, including whether you're on a Raspberry Pi or any platform, um, should be able to use this driver and it should work just the same. Um, this is a super cool, super powerful part of, of embedded Rust and how we've been able to uh, write a lot of drivers and things like that very, very quickly that have allowed us to kind of, just with a few open source, or a lot now, of open source contributors, uh, kind of catch up to all the sensors and all the boards and chips that are out there. So that's the super high level. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I keep an eye on both the chat in YouTube as well as the Matrix chat. So if you're not on the Rust Embedded Working Group Matrix chat, you should definitely come join us because we have a ton of really helpful, um, helpful people there. And I have Twitter messages, but you don't get to see that. I'm going to look at that on my monitor that's off stream just to make sure nothing important is going on. Uh, no, not anything right now. An important message, but not right now important. So yeah, these are those embedded HAL traits. And actually, I'm going to go look at um, the embedded HAL. So this is docs.rs, where the documentation for all the published crates are for Rust. And I'm going to go look at the I squared C traits. Um, and we're going to look at the blocking ones just for now to keep it simple. Um, so we've got a couple things that if you say I have um, an I squared C device, there's a couple different things that you can do with an I squared C device. You can read, write, write with an iterator, um, which says like instead of just giving you a block of bytes, I give you an iterator that has a bunch of bytes in it. Uh, write iter read, which these are like write read. It's pretty common in um, I squared C where you're going to do in one transaction, a start the transaction, write some data, then read some data. Um, we're not going to use that today because that's not how this keyboard works, but um, we're just going to be using this read and write trait. So let's take a quick look at that. So reading means that I'm going to have my I squared C device. I need to give it the address. So I squared C devices always have, well, either a seven or a 10 bit address. Um, we're gonna have a seven bit one um, and then a buffer. So when I'm reading data, this is, I'm telling the I squared C device, go get me five bytes and put them in this buffer. We don't need to tell it the length because it can look at the length of this slice. And this is how it figures out how many bytes to read. Um, same with write, it does the same thing, except for you notice it's not mutable because we're just sending this data. It just copies the data out to the I squared C device. Uh, so I have this really kind of gross, uh, hacky proof of concept code, but it got us, it got us the first chunk of the way. So that was good. 
Um, I figured out a couple of the things that I need to be doing. But what I'm actually going to do is let's move this all over to... I'm just going to put this in like old main rs and then i'm going to start cleaning up excuse me cleaning up this code so i'm actually going to get rid of almost everything so let's just bring it down to a simple um, i'm going to keep my twim and uart i'm going to use this because i'm going to use this um i've got my I got a couple things that I don't need. This was mostly just prototyping. So you see Rust analyzers complaining about unused code kind of all over the place. Um, yeah, we'll we'll end up using that stuff again. So you can see uh, I, I made these functions called q10 command, which sends a command, or q10 write, which is useful for some things. Uh, I think this actually should be something like q10 read, really, and q10 write. Um, but yeah, these are my basic like read and write functions. Um, but I'm going to be making a little bit more nice versions of this. So tell you what, let's um, CD office hours BB. Actually, I'm in BB key. Let me um, cargo new lib. Let's again make this. So now I have to name this. Um, let's go look at what Arturo calls this. This is the uh, bbq10 keyboard pmod. What does he call his Adafruit driver for this? Naming things is uh, an infinitely hard problem in program. bbq10 keyboard. Okay, cool. We're just going to call it that. Um, cargo new lib bbq10 and keybd. Um, so it's a little confusing for me because I have a library called BBQ, like BBQ UUE. It's a like bit buffer queue. So whenever I see BBQ, I'm like, hey, that's my other project. Um, but let's make a new library. So we're going to go over CD BBQ keyboard. And let's go ahead and add a folder to project. BBQ keyboard. So now we've got this, and we're going to do cargo add embedded HAL. Um, so we're going to add embedded HAL to the dependencies. So this is pulling in our definitions of traits. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is come over here, and I'm going to mark this as a no standard crate, which means this is a library that does not require the standard library, um, which means we're not pulling in Rust standard library, which means we can use it for embedded systems, or at least bare metal embedded systems. Um, let me go clear some stuff out. Okay. Um, so we're going to need, where did my docs go? I probably closed that window. Um, let me pull up docs. Well, no, it's up here. Um, so I'm going to use embedded how blocking I2C and I'm going to want read and write. And the other thing I need to bring up is the docs for the keyboard. Okay. Excuse me. So we need to do a couple things. Let's save this. Yes, and I have unused things. Um, so let's make a struct um, bbq10 kbd. <coughs> um, this is going to take an i squared c. It's going to have this is a struct that has one thing that is going to be generic. Um, so this is generic, but where I to C is read plus write. So what I'm saying here is I have a struct 
that is generic over some item called I squared C where um, I squared C implements the read and write trait. Yeah. Um, so this is saying whatever you can give me whatever you'd like as long as it implements the read and write trait. And I am doing that because um, we'll need to read and write data from the, um, the keyboard. Yeah, so let's impl, um, let's just copy and paste this, and I need to do this. Um, let's make function new, which takes a um, I2C, which is of type I2C, and it's going to return a self. And I'm probably going to want to return option self, but I'll fix that in a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to make a self with I2C. Yeah, wonderful. Um, pub function, pub struct, um, that's not used yet. And then in my main crate, I'm going to go ahead and um, in my dependencies, I'm going to add a new dependency, which is uh, bbq10 kbd uh, version equals 0.1.0 zero because I just created it and that's the default and the path is going to be bbq10 keyboard so this is just saying I'm adding a new path or local dependency um, which is this new library that I just created so I'm going to do that and then in my main rs I'm going to go and include that so use bbq10 kbd bbq10 kbd yep um, and then if I don't have, let's see if I have, okay, I do have embedded HAL in here, which is good. Um, yep, yep, yep. So I have embedded HAL and use embedded HAL blocking I2C. I'm going to need them over here as well. So they're in scope. So um, my I squared C device does implement both of these, but I need to have these in scope just so I, uh, so Rust can figure things out. Ernesto, thanks for your help here. I'm learning embedded Rust, and in general, I haven't found how to enable IRQ and DMA transfers using the embedded HAL. Is there any plan for embedded DMA and IRQ trait, if that makes sense, or something like that? I know in the packs there are registers for enabling this, but I don't know how to mix the embedded HAL in a reusable and clean way. Um, so in Ernesto. I will admit, well, interrupts, we don't really have a trait for those. Um, there is a way to make interrupt handlers using Cortex MRT. Um, if you'll see stuff, like if you ever see stuff in embedded Rust that's like radio um, and it's got this annotation interrupt, um, that comes from the Cortex MRT crate. And that says this is a function called radio which means it's meant for the radio interrupt of your device. Um, so that's how you interact with interrupts. I haven't seen an embedded HAL trait for that. Um, for DMA, we're actually doing a focus project right now. So in the embedded working group does these things called focus projects where, um, and let me show you how to look those up. Um, where we say, like, for DMA, we haven't come up actually with a good uh, abstraction for that with something like embedded HAL. So we have some some people working on that right now who are kind of working on proposing what um, a generic interface over DMA could look like. So you can go into the Rust Embedded Working Group. This is github.com slash Rust Embedded slash WG. Um, this is our coordination repository. And in here we have projects in progress. Um, and you can see DMA API documentation. So this is where people are working on this. And there is a do, do, do trait discussion. So this is where folks are discussing this and they're proposing DMA traits. And there's some active conversation going on about what that interface should be. Um, so if you're interested in that, come check it out. It's not ready to use yet. Right now, most people are just kind of manually writing DMA stuff themselves. Um, but we're working on it. We want to provide a, uh, a portable 
abstraction over DMA in the same way that we're doing things like I squared C. So hopefully that answered your question. Um, okay, so I have this. So let me go ahead. I make my twim device. So um, Nordic calls I squared C twim or two wire interface master, I think. Um, so I have one of these. So before we go to the loop, let me call BB keyboard new with my twim. Uh, so let mut key b d equals write is defined multiple times. Ah, I have two write traits. Uh, use core format. I'll use format write when I need it later. So now if we come over here, I don't need to be running my code. Cargo watch minus x check. Cool. So we've got a, yeah, it's complaining because I'm not using a bunch of stuff, but that's okay. Uh, but I don't have any errors, which means this compiled, which is good. And let me do a cargo watch help. Um, let's do cargo watch w dot and w dot dot bb. So I want it to watch both folders, like my application folder as well as my keyboard driver folder, um, and run the check command whenever any of those change. So just making sure that that worked. If I do something like that, yep, it does rerun. So this is kind of how I develop. I usually sit with just a cargo watch window open, um, and I look for errors. So usually Rust Analyzer will tell me pretty quick, but if I want to read the errors a lot of the time, um, it's easier to just go look over there. Um, okay, so let's do a quick um, version check. So if I wanted to have a function called like pub function get version, and we're going to take a mutable reference to self, and we're going to return um, major minor. Uh, so let's make a pub struct version. I never remember all the stuff that I want to derive, but uh, major uh, pub major is going to be a U8, and pub minor is going to be a U8. Um, version, uh, and actually, let's let's introduce a result. So I'm also going to want um, enum error. So I'm going to make myself an Derive debug. Um, I'm just gonna. How do I want to map these errors out? Um, let's just have a. I like having a to do error, and eventually I will come back and make pleasant error codes here. But, um, and then let's use. Um, Type result equals uh, core result result or was it? It's colon, isn't it? I never remember the syntax for this. Yep, so we just have a local result that always means that it uses our error type and then whatever the good value is. Um, I know some people don't like this style, but I, I like this style. Um, so we're going to make this a result version. Unimplemented. Can't leak private type error. Well, then let's make error not a private type. OK, so to get the version. Um, we need to do, so the interface for this works something, interface for this keyboard. And I was actually talking to our Arturo, and 
I noticed that the Adafruit devices have like the same interface and I was wondering where it came from. And apparently it's just like an ATSAMD hardware abstraction layer, like in the C hardware abstraction layer. Um, this is just how they like expose an I squared C uh, device is like, this is what the hardware abstraction library provides. Cause it's kind of weird. Cause to interface with it, like um, to read the firmware version register, you do write address um, and then you give it this reg ver, which is zero one. So you just write one byte to it and then you do a read to the address and then read one byte. So like you do a write that selects which register you're looking at and then you do a read to get the value back. So there's always like this two-step process. Um, it's really similar to, I wrote a driver for the Adafruit Seesaw and the Adafruit Neo Trellis, which is like a, this little button pad kind of thing. Uh, and it works exactly the same way, but I think they're also using an HTSAMD there. So that's probably why it works exactly the same way. Um, so let's do a get version. So we're gonna do, so remember we can only use the functions that are available on the trait. So I'm gonna go do a write. So I'm gonna do self.i2c.write. Um, and I'm gonna put a, for now, I'm gonna have a const um, kbd adder, which is gonna be a u8 that is ox1f. This is um, default. There's a way you can change it, but I'm not gonna expose that quite yet. So write the address is this, and I'm gonna need to read one byte back. No, right. Um, so I'm gonna have another constant, const, um, what is this, version reg. Oop. register uh, which is a u8 which is ox01 so I'm gonna send it a slice with the version register in it yep um, and then I need to convert it from the um, the error type into my error type, but and I'm gonna just do that by map error error to do. And then I'm just gonna use the question mark operator, which means if this didn't go well, then immediately return. Okay, so set the register and then I'm going to need to let mutt um, return for a ret val is going to be I think it only reads one byte one byte so I just need a 0 u8 and uh, it's going to be one byte so then I need to do self.i2c dot read um, let me go look at my read which is exactly the same it just takes a mutable buffer um, so read keyboard adder um, and mut retval dot map error um, error to do. Let me see. Let me just add another one that's just uh, I two I two C. So this just means a generic I squared C error. And I'll come back and, like I said, make better error types later. Um, so now I should have the value, um, and then I can return okay version major what does it say 
the first nibble contains the major version and the second nibble contains the minor version of the firmware. So major is going to be um, let val equal let val zero equals uh, uh, val let's mask it to the top byte and shift it over four and then minor is going to be val percent x o f um so just the top nibble is going to be the major version and the minor version and then we return okay expected a fun once blocking found error yeah that's kind of gross but should work okay so then we're going to let's let verse equals kbd dot for get version dot unwrap and then let's go steal some formatting code from old main. Main. And I'm just going to print. Verse. So I'm just going to write to my serial port, um, use format, write as, yeah, okay, it's in scope. Okay, cool. So let's do a cargo run release. Okay, screen, we've got my typing thing. So we hit this and let's run. Ah, we getting a panic. Why are we getting a panic? We get our serial port. We get this. Ah, uh, it's gonna complain that that's not in RAM. I thought we fixed that. Why did we not fix that? I know what this problem is, but I thought we fixed that for the embedded HAL. Um, NRF52, how, how common source twim, um, read, impl read, self dot read. Do you do it for? Hmm. No, I guess we only do that for the UART. Okay, that's annoying. Um, so the NR52 has a problem where it won't do DMA out of RAM, or it will only do DMA out of RAM, not out of this. I ran into this in the last stream. I thought embedded HAL was smart enough to automatically copy, but I guess not for I2C. I think we fixed that for some peripherals, but not all of them. Um, so let me, uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make, um, retval zero equals version register retval this is kind of hacky and gross um, and then let's reset that to
zero, and then. So I just put it in RAM. So, yep, okay, so it's not panicking. Version major zero, minor two. Okay, yep, that's about what we expect. So I have looked at this before, and it is major version zero, minor version two. So successfully read. I should probably make a function that just abstracts over all of this, but let's just keep going. So we've got some more, we've got some more driver things that we can do. Um, I actually don't know the, I didn't use the config stuff. We don't need the interrupt status register yet. Um, So, hmm. So we have the key status. So I also noticed that there is a bug that if um. So technically, like one f should be the largest thing we can get in key count, but it will actually count up to hex two zero, which means that it kind of rolls over into the caps lock button. Excuse me. So let me um let me do a I probably need a structure for what we can get back from the FIFO. So the FIFO is a uh, is 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 this. Um so like it keeps a FIFO of all of the um like key values and the first byte is the state like pressed pressed and held or released um, and then the second byte is like the ASCII key code of that um, so let me uh, let me make a pub enum um, key which is either going to be um, invalid I know it will return like zero zero sometimes um, we can have who key raw um, pressed u8 pressed or let's just call it held u8 and uh, released u8 so this is going to be our just kind of raw pub get pub function get key raw and my self it's going to return a result raw key key raw um so let's do so we're gonna have let's just call this buff Just copy and paste this. So this is going to be the um, this is going to be the FIFO register actually. Get FIFO key raw um, FIFO register. So buff, uh, we know the return value is actually going to be two here. So zero is going to be FIFO register. Um, and then we write not the keyboard address. No, what am I doing? No, you don't need to write anything for this. You just need to read something for this. Ah, OK. So I don't No, I need to write the FIFO register. Two bytes. Keys. No, I don't. I just need to read that. Okay, so let's get rid of the right. Read. Uh, 
Yes. Yes. I'm confusing myself here. I do need to write the FIFO register. Keyboard address buff zero or dot dot one because I want up to the first byte. Um, buff zero zero. And then, yeah, I'm going to read the two bytes. Okay, so this should be right. Yep, result key raw from result. Ah, okay. Uh, match buff. I think I just do buff. Um, zero. Don't care. Um, let's okay wrap this because if we've gotten here we've understood the result this is going to be a key raw invalid uh, if it's a one it is going to be a key raw pressed n if it is a two, it is a key raw pressed held N. And if it's three N, it's going to be a key raw released N. And then if it is anything else, it's also a key raw invalid. It's like a really invalid. So really I don't need, just need these. Because anything else is definitely gonna be invalid. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and in my loop, um, loop let uh, key raw equals kbd dot get key get fifo key raw match key raw um well, I guess let's just unwrap because I don't really care. Um, and then I'm going to also need key raw match key raw um, invalid. So if we have nothing here, we're just going to do timer dot delay milliseconds a hundred if it's a key otherwise at um, let's steal our formatting code right key Let's call this key because that's a more useful name. Is FIFO register supposed to be nine? Uh, probably. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, that would have been a weird thing. Thank you, Chris Wilson. Yep, good catch. Copy paste error. Um, and El Suisse is asking for these buttons. You don't require a D bounce algorithm, right? Um, I don't. So there's actually a microcontroller connected to these keys. Um, and it's handling all the debounce and everything for me. So th I'm, this is just like a high level I squared C driver. Um, cool. So I have this. So now we should go in a loop. And as long as there are things there, um, oh, no, main. Um, why are you unhappy with this? 
I32, U8. Um, so if we get a bad key, it's going to wait. It's not going to try and read again. Otherwise, it'll print whatever the key it just got was. So let's do a cargo run. And we're not panicking. So if I type K, oh, it would help if we were looking at um, QWERTY. So you can see it's able to keep up pretty fast. I can press a bunch of things if I press and hold and then release. Otherwise, you just get a, a lot of presses and releases. Um, and this is beautiful. Um, but we're probably going to want ASCII and stuff from this. Um, so I'm going to take a quick break. And I'll be back. And we'll make some higher level things. So thanks, everyone, for watching. I'll be back in like five or ten minutes. Uh, see you soon.
Okay, I'm back. Uh, we do have one question. So someone's asking why I didn't do something like uh, keyboard address OX1. So why I didn't just do something like um, this. So Rust is really smart and it realizes that this is a constant expression. So it moves that into the dot text section uh, or that gets put in flash in the microcontroller. Um, and the NRF52 in particular won't DMA directly out of flash. It has to DMA out of RAM. So to get around that, I copy that to kind of a temporary mutable buffer, which has to be in RAM, because if you write to it, it needs to be in RAM. Um, it's gonna be on the stack. Um, so to get around that limitation in the NRF52 hardware, I do this, There's a it's a workaround for that basically. Um, but yeah. Uh, other chips you may not need that, but that's why I'm doing that specifically in the uh, for this. So other people are going to so unfortunately for other uh, non NRF fifty two users, you're going to have to uh, deal with that for me. <laughs> and at some point, I'll probably go and submit a pull request to the NRF fifty two crate that um, implements buffering. I think. If you look at like the UART register, um, I think we do copy automatically where we do have a um, UART write. Yeah, so copy all data into an on stack buffer so we never try easy DMA from flash. Um, so it will actually go and do like chunk by chunk, copy it to RAM um, for you. So uh, I'll probably just implement that for the um, the I squared C. It just hasn't been done yet. And then I can probably remove this back down. Um, but yeah, it's one of those annoying things about not everything's perfectly abstractable in, in hardware um, or in software about hardware because all these different chips that we use are just really specific but we do our best with embedded hell and embedded embedded hell gets us usually like not an optimal driver but <clears throat> something that works pretty well and if you're just getting it started it works and then if you've got to like tweak it yourself you can but uh most of the time embedded hell's great for when you just need something to work um yeah if you really need to hand optimize for your hardware to move some of this stuff out of ram you can do that but uh like i said it's not needed most of the time. I'm looking, I have my window open and there's a moth flying in my, oh no, it flew in. Oh, well, nothing to be done now. I'll take care of that after the stream. Maybe you'll see a moth flying around. I should close my window. One second. Keep the moths from coming in. Um, okay, so let's press on. What do we want to add next? Let's just fill out 
there's some like convenience methods that I could provide, like reading to a string buffer or something like that. Um, but I don't want to do that yet because I know that's going to be a little annoying. So let's, um, I don't know. Does caps lock? Let's, uh, I don't know how Blackberry Q10 caps lock. Well, it probably says, um, I saw him talk about something. Let's do back backlight. Let's do the backlight. Um, pub fun set backlight and mutt self. Sec. Um, and we're also going to need level, which is going to be a U8. Result. Um, I don't think we're going to have a result. Um, backlight control register. What are, are there interesting? Oh, this is the interrupt status register configuration. This is mostly just turning config key int use mods. Modify the keys being reported. Okay. So if I do caps lock on the board, it's just going to send that. Should alt sim and shift keys modify the keys. Ah, should alt. Okay. Okay. Three and Jade is saying, thanks for doing the stream. This makes me shift to rust. Cool. Yeah, definitely try it out. Hopefully, hopefully this helps. I figured it would be good to do a stream of just writing an embedded HAL driver because uh, it's one of those things that like, once you understand the concepts, it becomes very straightforward and it sometimes is even easier than implementing it for a specific board. Or if you just have like a sensor you want to write a driver for. Um, well, this also means you not have universal drivers, which will just work on the NR52. Yeah, you're right. Um, like I said, the real prof, I'm going to go ahead and implement that patch in, um, the NR52 because we should be doing that for the embedded HAL. We went back and forth on it and we decided not to do it for like when you're calling the NRF52s ones. Um, but generally for the embedded HAL ones, we'll swallow some overhead so that drivers work this is also bit some other people at ferris um there was some there's a gas sensor i think it was the sensirion one and we were trying to interface to it from an nrf52 and it just wouldn't work and eventually we realized it was this bug um i think in that version that was old versions of the code which didn't even report an error when it happened because the dma gives you no feedback that you're trying to dma from flash which is annoying um but yeah Do I do do I plan on doing tutorials in embedded Rust from beginner to pro? Um I just stream what I'm working on a lot of the time. This one seemed like a good thing to work on because people could use it. Um I generally will explain anything, so if you're ever watching me and you have questions, um feel free to ask questions, but um if there are any specific requests, feel free to ping me on Twitter or something like that and I'll I'll try and do an episode on that. Um if you're also let me let me do my my quick plug uh oxidize so my company runs so i work at a or I started a company called fair systems we do consulting but we also run an embedded rust conference so if you're interested in embedded rust come check out oxidize it's going to be all remote it's going to be in july um if you want to give a talk we'd love to have you have a talk if you want to come and watch the conference you can buy a ticket and watch it stream it online um, we also are giving training workshops so if you want a hands-on training of exactly how to write embedded rust code uh come check out our trainings we're gonna have folks like me stuff like japarek people like Jonas, um giving these trainings we're gonna be sending out free nordic hardware to everyone who's participating in the workshop um and you learn to write drivers and stuff like this so come check out oxidize if you want you can also check out like oxidize 1k we gave an online conference earlier in march um we had some wonderful talks and those are all up on youtube so you can go back and watch that um, yeah, that's my plug for oxidize, but let me write a backlight driver. 
Um, otherwise, yeah, you can check out the backlog of videos on here. I try and explain what I'm doing, but yeah, like I know, like I said, if you ever have questions, just leave a comment either on YouTube or Twitter or something, and I'll try and answer it. Or come hang out in the Matrix chat. People are uh, pretty pretty helpful over there. Um, okay, no more distractions. Let's uh, const backlight register, which is a U8, which is OX05. Um, and we're going to need to write let mut buff equals zero. I think we only need one byte for this. Um, so that I'm going to write, like I said, I should probably have a function that does this. Um, FIFO register. I want the backlight register. Ah, and he has a note that when you write to the register, you need to add hex 80 to it. I remember seeing that backlight register five becomes 85. Okay, so write is 85. Um, so we write to the backlight register and then, ah, but we also need to write, so this is actually gonna be two bytes. Uh, and then buff one equals level. Um, and then I think we just write. Uh, yeah, I think actually, I think I could just do that. Uh, so let's kind of as a hacky uh, yeah let's just have a counter um, u8 equals zero whenever we get a key um, counter plus equals one or counter dot wrapping add one um, and then let's do keyboard dot set backlight counter can't So just every time we press a, a button, it's gonna change the backlight level. So as I generally press this more and more, uh, 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 you know what, this is gonna be better if I print what the counter is. And let's do it by five just so it goes a little faster. Why? Oh, right. And let's set it to zero when we start. I forget the wrapping ad returns the value. That always bites me. There's probably a warning in there that says, yep, unused value, but uh, I've been ignoring my my warnings because I have too many of them. Um, so now when I go over to my screen, hmm, my backlight isn't changing. Why isn't my backlight changing? Um, Lib backlight register 85. What did I do in old main? Because I did some stuff with the backlight. Right. Twim 05. Q10 right. Register. And 80. One is the right. Did I send the whole register? No, I didn't send the whole register. That's not particularly helpful. Ah, 
copy paste errors again biting me over and over again okay now the backlight's off which looks right and then as i press buttons it lights up so let's see if i can't let me pull up my own webcam so i can see what i'm doing so as i press some buttons it gets brighter and then it gets darker when it wraps around and then it gets brighter and it gets darker this is not particularly useful behavior but it's useful for a driver test so that's a working driver and you know what let's clean up some of these errors because it would be useful if i saw those errors so i don't need either of these anymore and I think it's complaining that twim doesn't need to be mutable because I immediately move it into the keyboard. I guess I don't need these. I think it's smart enough to figure out that those traits are there. Cool. So now I have actual warnings again, if I run into any. Um, what else do I have? I've got a chip reset register sure that's a good easy one reading or writing to this register will cause a software reset of the chip okay pub function software reset and mutt self result so let's just uh read from const uh Reset register U8 equals OX O8. And we'll just self dot I2C dot read a KBD address. Nope, I still need to do this. buff zero equals reset register. Uh, I guess I have to write and then read maybe? I guess. How do I do an empty write to this? Uh, KBD and buff. read kpd adder and i guess just read i guess i'll just read nothing from it i don't know let's see what happens here and mutt u8 Um, let's just do a software reset before the start of main. Sure. Um, kbd dot software reset dot unwrap and then Let's just print it twice because why not? I got one version. Verse, verse. I should get two verse. Am I sitting waiting for... <laughs> nice. Let's do a debug build. Oh, it may have broken my terminal.
Where am I? I'm in read. So I went to read from that. Is that just going to... Hmm. Let's do the backlight thing first. And tell you what, let's actually, um, step into next, 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 next. Keyboard set backlight to zero. And I've got my, the problem is if I don't do this quickly enough, it will actually reset. Hmm, how do I want to do this? Is it, well, let's just step into this. Next, next, step, okay. So that was enough to reset the backlight. So I actually don't need to read from it. Okay, so that's probably just gonna be the answer is I don't need to read from it at all. Um, this is enough to reset the device. And no, we've managed to, hmm. See, the thing is with the NRF52 drivers, they don't have a timeout. So I'm wondering if, I bet you if I were to throw a delay in there um, of like a millisecond, gonna work no interesting where are you getting stuck bb key get version right How many milliseconds do you take to boot up? You take a lot of milliseconds to boot up. How about 10 milliseconds? Is 10 milliseconds enough to get you to boot? Yeah, 10 milliseconds is enough. I guess one millisecond was not enough. Probably like five milliseconds. Something terrible has happened to my terminal. No, five milliseconds is not enough. So you need like a full 10 milliseconds to boot. That's interesting. That's interesting. Well, I should just add a warning. Um, reset the device via software. Warning, device may take 10 milliseconds to reboot you it will not be responsive during this time. 
Okay, cool. Documented. Make sure I'm not missing any answers anywhere. Nope. Um, okay, what else we got? We got uh, chip reset, pull frequency configuration register. Not implemented, cool. Not implemented, cool. Backlight, we should probably have a git backlight. Um, let's just be lazy and copy this. Git, git backlight result u8. Five. Buff is backlight register right to the backlight register zero. And in our main, let's just go ahead and do do do. Cert eek uh, kbd dot get backlight counter. So we're just gonna so it should crash immediately if nope. Yep, getting the backlight works. Cool. Um, what else do we need? We probably want to expose the key status register. The problem is with this is, like I said, there's a slight overflow here. Um, so it'll actually roll over into bit five if... Um, if that's set, which means that how can I do this without draining the FIFO? Um, hmm. Because the problem is the only way I can actually tell if the caps lock is set is if. Um, I need like a maybe, yes, no, maybe. Um, okay, well, let's do yes, no, maybe. Um, drive debug pub enum num lock state is going to be on let's do off or on pub enum caps lock state is going to be off on or unknown let's just guess um and then yeah so drive debug uh, pub struct um, key status well actually you're going to be um hmm pub enum um fifo count is going to be known u8 or at least
Hmm. Empty or 32. It's kind of annoying because you don't actually know and without draining the FIFO you won't be able to actually know. Um, so let's key status is going to be num lock num lock state uh, caps lock caps lock state and then FIFO count is going to be um, FIFO count. This is not going to be a particularly helpful interface until the next version of the software. Um, so let's copy this. Did I copy that twice? I did. Okay, this is gonna be the last one that I add for now. And then I'm gonna add some doc tests and kind of wrap up the crate and then I'm gonna publish it just so this is kind of a full guide of how to build and publish an embedded HAL crate. Um, and then I'm probably gonna go off stream and add some more convenience methods or something like that. Um, but this is enough to get you started. Uh, so let's, let's uh, get key status uh backlight key status register so we write to it we're going to need one byte back so that works keyboard address key status register buff zero zero keyboard address okay so now we have um match buff zero and you are actually going to be a key status um let's see can i do hmm okay let mut buff equals buff zero um let's let's make it response uh i think you could maybe do oh there's the bit match crate i don't i'm not gonna pull that in right now um if resp and o or ob O one, one two three four. Um, okay, let mut status equals key status. Uh, okay, let numlock equals if response and this does not equal zero, then it is set and true. No, let's just do this resp equals resp and ob one o one one let's just mask that out and then match resp um, if you are ob one two three oh one zero it's two Actually, let's just do hex 20. Inconclusive. Uh, let you are going to be caps 
lock FIFO count equals. Um, so we are going to return caps lock state unknown and FIFO count empty or 32. Um, Let's see, count if count uh, this is I'm making a complicated match statement for myself. Uh, and O B Okay, let me just let caps lock equals resp and ob 0010234 did not equal 0 Let's see. Five. Let. Okay. Now I can do my match statement. If match Okay, so if caps lock is true and the FIFO count is zero, this is where we're going to have um, key status, caps lock. Unknown num lock is going to be if num lock num lock state. Unlock and then what's the FIFO count is going to be FIFO count empty or 32. Okay. If it is uh, true and N, then it's going to be key status, caps lock caps lock state on num lock FIFO count is going to be n it's going to be FIFO count known n uh, otherwise if it's off false n key status caps lock Caps lock state off. Num lock. FIFO count. FIFO count. Known. N. This is a terribly complex interface. Uh, okay. And get rid of this line. Cannot find value num lock. I probably didn't put. FIFO count doesn't implement debug. Well, that's cool. Cool. Um, 
So let's just go print this in the idle. Equals keyboard dot git key status. Is that what I called it? Yeah. And then let's copy and paste you. And let's delay a whole second just so we don't spam it. Status. Known 16. Interesting. I am totally not doing the right thing there. Um, known 150. That's just, you know, a weird, a weird value. What have I done wrong? numlock equals response and am I just reading junk values or something? Hmm. <laughs> If response and response equals response and that response and and are these like active low or something is numlock on at the moment is my ordering backwards or something hmm I do some terrible masking thing. Okay, let's let's see what I'm doing entirely wrong. I bet you it's that I'm only reading. No, I only need to read one byte. Key status for four. Oh, right. I'm reading the backlight value. That would do it. Copy paste, had to bite me one more time for the night. I should probably also read it before, or I should read it after the delay, because then it will actually show how many are in the buffer while we're waiting. So it fills up. Yep. So we can see our empty or 32 and our caps lock goes to unknown when I mash the keyboard. Um, let's see if I can turn caps lock on. Is it like sim shift? Sim alt? Oh, 
Oh, I've turned NumLock on. Oh, interesting. I think shift alt, alt shift. Okay. Alt shift turns the num lock on. Alt shift turns num lock on. And if I press Oh, is it like double click shift or something? Just one click. Okay, yeah, you click it twice. Alt sim. Alt shift. Okay, alt shift. And then double click to turn it off. Okay. Cool. Um, okay, cool. Well, that's an interface. Um, so real quick, let's add some comments and let's publish a, let's publish this crate. So this is a, so let's add some dot comments. Um, and embedded how crate for the, for Arturo 182's BB Q 10 Blackberry Q10 Pmod keyboard. Um, written on stream. Let's copy. Written on James's office hours stream. Okay, um, so this is a default address. Um, the error type for this crate. It's not gonna be a wonderful crate. I should probably go back and add better docs. Um, a generic I2C embedded how I two C error. Struct representing our Blackberry Q ten P mod keyboard. The version identifier of our keyboard firmware. A raw key event from the uh, management FIFO. The current num lock state, current state of num lock num lock is enabled by pressing what was it alt shift alt shift Alt left shift pressing Alt plus left shift and disabled by double clicking left left shift. The current state of caps lock. P 
caps lock is enabled by pressing alt plus right shift and disabled by double clicking left shift is it boom alt right shift double clicking either shift key note due to a firmware bug the FIFO count may roll over into the caps lock bit in this case an unknown value will be returned the current um, number of key events waiting in the Events waiting in the FIFO queue. Each event contains a state plus key ID. Note, due to a firmware bug, FIFO count may roll over into the capsule. In this case, and empty or 32 will be returned and there are either zero or 32 elements in the FIFO currently. Um, the current key status register reported by the keyboard firmware. Um, create a new, ah, that's the other thing I need. Um, pub fun release that consumes self and returns an I to C. Uh, so I thought I to see create a new BBQ 10 keyboard instance um, uh, consume self returning the I to C inner I to C device. Get the version reported by the keyboard's firmware. Obtain a single FIFO item from the keyboard's firmware. Get the current level of backlight all U8 values are valid. Set. Get the reported status of the keyboard. Developer's note. Default 
address not currently changeable um let's steal some of our Well, I'm not going to do doc tests right now. Uh, let's go ahead and take this and project, add folder project, office hours, BBQ, open. Uh, I'm going to be a little lazy. CP, oh, no, not this one. I want this one, CP dot slash BBQ, license dot dash star here um, burp 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 touch readme.md where am I readme.md bbq 10 QBD embedded HAL driver documentation BBQ 10 QBD. Uh, boop, boop, boop. I'm not going to be very helpful and Apache license. MIT license 2020 cargo tomal core cargo tomal I am lazy BB2 version description equals in embedded how driver for Turo 182's BBQ 10 KBD PMOD. Um, description repository James Munn's BBQ 10 KBD repository authors edition. Read me I can't remember what the valid categories are, but this will be enough for now. Gotta have a license. Um yeah, I think. I think that's all I need. Um, getting nor cargo tomal read me one through six. Commit initial work from the stream. Cargo package. Cool, so that will build. Um, let me github.com. Let's make a new repo for this. BBQ 10 KBD. Um, create repository. Git remote add origin this. Git push origin master. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and from the librs. Let's just lazily copy this into. I have on Twitter 
links to do 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 Mm-hmm. MIT lessons. And you know what I should do? I should do a cargo dock open just real quick to make sure that it's not terrible. Uh pull pull pull. Yeah, that's not terrible. Why are you not showing up for docs? Lib.rs. Save. Did I not save? I did not save. Save docs. Glad I checked. Yeah, at least we have some docs, so that's good. Cargo package and cargo publish. Cool. So git tag v0.1.0. So let's add a tag git push origin master tags. So let's push all of this to master. And we have a tag. So when we look at it on, where did that go? I had. We have at least one release. We have docs. If we go to docs.rs and we look at recent releases, Q, we're probably somewhere back there in the queue. So our docs will show up in like 15, 20 minutes. Uh, if we go to, uh, so crates, bbq10 kbd oh, it helps if i do it up here all right so we have no standard library embedded how or embedded development repository dependent crates should have a link to docs do i not have a link to docs interesting i must not have put that in the cargo tomol Interesting. Or maybe it's just realizing that I don't have a, like if I go and look up a EQ, yeah, documentation. So it's probably just figuring out that it hasn't been posted to docs.rs yet. Um, okay, cool. So this is a fully published uh, BBQ tech KBD embedded HAL driver. Still a lot of convenience methods and nice things that I could provide, but it is a totally working Embedded HAL driver written from start to finish, published everything you need to do to start and publish a uh, an embedded HAL library. So I'm coming up on two hours of streaming here. It's about one in the morning, so it's about my bedtime. Uh, if anyone has any last second questions, um, feel free to throw them out. I'll answer them. Otherwise, uh, yeah, come check out Oxidize. Uh, come check out the stuff we're doing at Ferris Systems. Keep watching the stream. I need a couple more subscribers to get a custom channel ID. So if anyone uh, hasn't subscribed yet, I'd appreciate subscribing. And if you watched all the way to the end, then thank you. Um, but I think that's it for me today. I'll stick around in the chat for another minute or two in case people have questions. But if not, 
thanks for watching. Have a great week, and uh, I'll see you again sometime later this week. All right, bye.